Let's do a question on the physics of cooking for A-level physics. Hey Z Physics, are you seriously gonna do a cooking question dressed like that? You know what, you're right. I don't often do questions about the physics of ovens, but when I do, I like to do them in style. That's a bit better. Okay, so this question is about an electric cooker which consists of an oven and an EM induction hub. The oven is not sealed, good thing, so the air inside remains at an atmospheric pressure of around 1.0 times 10 to the 5 pascals. The volume of the oven is given the air inside the oven behaves as an ideal gas. Remember, every time we come across a statement which says that the air behaves an, uh, as an ideal gas, this means that we can ignore the potential energy. So we are increasing the temperature of the oven from room temperature around 20 degrees to 200 degrees C. That's quite a high temperature. I wonder what we're actually cooking. Show that the internal energy of the air in the oven is the same at all temperatures. Support your answer with an explanation of the motion of the air molecules in terms of kinetic theory. So for this question we need to do two things. So the first one is a little bit tricky. We need to show that the internal energy is independent of the temperature. Then we need to support this part two with an explanation of the motions of the molecules. Okay, so in terms of the first part, the tricky bit on this is to know where to actually start. So the internal energy will be given by the sum of all of the randomly distributed kinetic and potential energies of all of the molecules. However, because this is an ideal gas, we can say that the internal energy will just be the sum of all of the kinetic energies. So if the temperature, let's say, is T, and for n particles, each of them is going to have a kinetic energy which is going to be given by 3 halves multiplied by Boltzmann's constant K multiplied by the temperature T in Kelvin. Side note, but don't you just wish that your oven at home was actually measuring temperature in Kelvin? Let me know in the comments. I have nothing else to add to this equation because it's an ideal gas and the potential energy terms have disappeared. Okay. Now, here is something interesting. I have N and K in this equation. Because this is an ideal gas, I also know that PV will be equal to NKT. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this equation and I'm going to rearrange for NK, which will be equal to PV divided by T. And now I'm going to take this in and I'm going to sub that into here. This is part of our recipe. And now rather than N times K, I'm going to write that the internal energy is equal to PV over T multiplied by 3 halves multiplied by t. And look at this, the t's are going to cancel and what I get, I'm going to rewrite this over here, that the internal energy, call it E, will be equal to PV times 3 over 2 and that's it. So this is independent of the temperature. Now, how is this actually possible? We also need to provide an explanation in terms of the motion of the particles using kinetic theory. So this question is all about pressure. And what we need to do is write down statements that explain that when a particle's temperature is increased, its velocity is increased because it will collide with the size with the size of the container this means that its change of momentum will also be greater because the change of momentum delta p will be greater the amount of force that's exerted onto the wall will also be greater uh, in the opposite direction to the force of the molecule but this will be equal to delta p over delta t and because pressure is just force over area if the force was to increase the pressure should increase but it doesn't so how can that be 
The only way this could happen is if some of the particles leak out, because remember, PV is equal to NKT. So this means that while T is increasing, we are losing some amount of substance, some particles are escaping our container, and this is actually what is keeping the pressure constant. The Mark scheme also accepts a calculation of this, but I do prefer working in symbols, and I think this bit is a little bit easier. But let me know what you think. Hopefully this was useful to have a look at yet another really, really important six marker. You need to have a look at this video right over here, and I'll go and check on my oven.